or I'll be, yeah, I'll be instructing you guys about the history of this monster of an instrument, the French horn. <laughs> so it all started by people actually getting the horn of an animal, hollowing it out, uh, chopping the, the side with the tip so you can blow in it, and then they would basically use that horn to like announce when celebrations started, when enemies were coming, and uh, when threats were also coming. But nowadays, uh, people still use it for like celebrations like Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur? Yeah. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, which is a, I think it's a Jewish celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. But then we also get to the natural horn. So pretend this French horn didn't have all this mess in the center, but it just had like this lead pipe and this part right here. Obviously it's missing the bell, but pretend it's there. But the natural horn was made, was first made in 1903, or 1703, uh, back in Germany, Germany, yes. It was mainly used for hunting, so like whenever like the Jägermeister would, uh, or the Jägermeister means hunts master in German. So whenever like he wanted to start the, the hunt, he would use the natural horn and just like toot a little tune, and then the hunt would begin. And then when the hunt would end, he would also he would do the uh, ending call. And then so like for for natural horns, oops, this is gonna fall. For natural horns, you have to use crooks. And what crooks are, if you can like. Do it twice. Yeah. So crooks are they basically go here. It's like a it's like an attachment to the horn. So what these crooks basically are, so like back when this didn't have valves, it was just like it was in it was all basically on partials. So basically these parts for the natural horn were like so basically there would be like a part by Mozart. So like uh, his third horn concerto is written in E flat. So basically you would have to take, uh, I think this is the E flat crook. You would take the E flat crook and basically put it right here where the lead pipe is. So you would switch them out for every part you had to play. So that's what it was like. It was a hassle to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much of a hassle. Can you go to the next one please? So this is a piece uh, with natural horn. Can we play? So this is basically him just playing it with just his armature and with the uh, hand positions too. So when you put the horn, when you put your hand in there, you can also like alter it or yeah, alter the pitches to where it more than just like open the overtones here. Which is why it sounds all like weird and like muffled at times. So like you can see like when it gets tight around inside the, the, the bell. get to the French one, which is actually not French, it's, this is German. <laughs> so, the, so the design for this is, is, is made by, by Germans. The, the actual French horn uses pistons, okay. It uses pistons, and what this uses is rotary valves, so it's like basically just like it just rotates in the, in the casing, but uh, with the French horn it uses pistons like here on the here on the mellophone, it uses the trumpet pistons. But the uh, first French horn, or the first single French horn, was made in 1888 by Heinrich Stozel and Frederick Blumel, or Blum, Blum? Um, I can't say the name. But the French horn was made in 1839, but then the first double horn was made in 1897, or the first prototype. Uh, after the, or, 
after the years was, you know, basically made better. It had, uh, I know sometimes most double horns have like string linkages like mine does, but then it also has uh, mechanical link linkages, which doesn't have a string, it's just like full metal. 